What's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. We've got a great guest with us today. He's the CEO of the fastest growing team in his state, and he's built it all on expired listings, social media, and sphere. So we're going to talk about how he's done that all, I think, under the age of 40 or something like that, 40 under 40, uh, maybe even 30 under 30. We'll see. He's somewhere between the ages of 12 and 57 years old. We'll find out exactly what's going on there. And we've got Greg. McDaniel, the junior grandmaster, is in the co-pilot seat where he so belongs. Um, unfortunately, he will not be with us on July 3rd because, as he's already told all of us, he will be on a couch somewhere enjoying a freshly made libation. So, Greg, yes. before you take off on some sort of weird uh, vacation, which I don't know why you'd bother taking one of those, what is up today? <laughs> What up, Johnson? Dude, I, we were talking with Dustin off air. We were kind of getting him ready for the, the real estate uncensored. And I, 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 I saw him and he, he, he was taking us in, taking us in. He's like, yeah, bitches, I got this. I don't need a rundown. I got I, 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 This is going to be easy for me. This is like we're on out of bed for me. Um, but we're super excited to have Justin here. It's going to be a lot of fun to see how he's built his team at such a young age. Also, guys, I, 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 something that I was talking to these two guys off air about. The fact is, you know, uh, Verizon, I had been having tech issues, so they sent me a new um, iPhone, iPhone 6 Pluses. I was, just, I was supposed to receive one. I did not receive one. I received two. And when I called to honestly give it back to them, I'm like, hey, dipshits, uh, <laughs> you gave me two. They're like, oh, my God, I thank God someone finally ethical is, you know, is calling up and trying to return this. And I was telling Matt and, and Dustin, I'm like, people honestly would keep them? I mean, what there's no point in keeping two. I mean, I was telling these guys that I got annoyed just changing out SIM cards, let alone just <laughs> trying to resell these things. Like, well, what, what I'm really surprised at is that we didn't show up for the show today, and there was an array of like three iPhones, like on a stand, <laughs> all pointed at Greg, all broadcasting live on Facebook simultaneously. I, for one, am shocked. <laughs> Hello, big world. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, I, am, but I, I, I can see you carrying around that thing like on the end of a stick, like just having it like just with you. So there's like selfies. multi camera live broadcast uh -oh. everywhere you go. Dude, yeah. that would be so much fun. But I did get a new light. Um, I got the, from the Limo Studios light package that we both have. Mm -hmm. Dude, I brought the little one and I put it right here. So I'm going to have much better light coming at me now. It's because yeah. my, my, that light is like dying and that one's dying. I just need better light, man. But enough about me. Let's talk about Dustin, man. That's what we're here to learn about. That's right. So Dustin, first of all, I mentioned that you're the, the CEO of the fastest growing team in your state. So give us an idea of where the heck you are, what your team uh, is kind of structured like, and um, what you guys do specifically. Sure. So uh, we started, or I started, I guess, about two years ago. And it's easy to keep track of because that was when my daughter was born. Um, the reason that, that I got into real estate, my wife and I were both teachers, and we just wanted a little bit more uh, flexibility and freedom and, and, quite frankly, more income. And so yeah. uh, I started as an individual agent, quickly discovered that teams were what was coming for the future. And so it didn't take long before we started building our team. We now have uh, 10 agents on our team, and we have three well, that do a really great job for us. Awesome. Cool, man. So, so zero to 10 agents in two years and ha w give us an idea of kind of the transaction and what your average uh, deal size is there. Sure. So our average price point is about 195, uh, which is a little bit higher than most agents in our area. Um, we seem to, to do well with the higher end homes um, and we're on track this year. Hmm. And okay. So that was, I don't know if it's cutting out for me, Greg, but it definitely um, cut out. I'm losing them. Yeah, so about about 200 transactions, just because I know that's what we talked about beforehand. But um, so most people, like just listening, without knowing exactly where you are in the area that you're in, would assume, you know, well, yeah, I mean, they're they're in, let's say they're in a big market, and let, there's a lot of subdivisions being built, and you know, maybe he's in the north side of Dallas where it's exploding, or Houston, or Chicago, or whatever, where it's just absolutely exploding. But you were saying off air that you're essentially in a very rural community. Yeah, we, we absolutely are. Um, the average size of a town in our area is three to 4,000 people. Um, yeah, crazy. The, biggest, the biggest city that we have is the city of Wilmington, which is about an hour and a half north of, of where we primarily do business, um, although we are branching out throughout the state as well. So three to 4,000 yeah. people average in, the, in, in a city. So what does Wilmington have, uh, 15 to 20-ish? Uh, Wilmington has about 70,000, so it's a pretty okay. decent-sized city, but it's, it's basically the suburbs of Philly. Oh, okay, because I mean I'm in a city of about fifty to seventy thousand right now. So basically, he's Matt, he's the size of Danville. Is is okay. pretty, pretty 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 healthy size. You can get a lot of you get a lot of deals out of that. But I mean, you guys are crushing it with almost two hundred. Mm -hmm. I mean, good lord, amigo! What do you put like crack in the, in all your agents like food to get them moving every single morning? 
<laughs> yeah, we, uh, we got a, we got a great team. There are a lot of hard workers. Good. All right, let's uh, let's jump into a couple of questions because I know you guys do a lot of your business based on expireds. That's what you did when you were starting off in the business for yourself. So I got two questions related to that. We want to cover real quick right at the top of the show. So Matt Graham, this is in the lead gen description objections group, says, "How much are you paying for old expired leads?" So I'm curious, uh, Dustin, if you guys have ever gotten into like buying old expired leads, like three, four, five year old leads, and and kind of how that's worked out for you. Yeah, um, expires in our area have been kind of taboo for other agents. The, we're, we're one of the only teams or, or realtors, I guess, that does it pretty aggressively. So uh, it was frowned upon when we got into the business, but we were determined <laughs> to do it anyway. Um, because I guess people, comes up there. Goodness. <laughs> people think that when they have that listing, it's theirs for life, regardless of whether or not it sells. So it's kind of um, like an ex-boyfriend bo- ex to a girlfriend, like, no, she's mine. Exactly. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't you exactly look at right. my ex. <laughs> like, it didn't work out, <laughs> no, homie. Oh my okay. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> So we, uh, we've we tried a, a bunch of different programs for, for generating those expired numbers and names, um, but we're spending about $175 a month with the platform that we use currently, um, and that is giving us not only new expires, but they also backlogged us with a couple of years of old expires when we, when we bought in. Hmm, awesome. Now, I bet you anything, the old expires are probably doing extremely well for you, right? They are, especially with inventory being so low right now. There's just we have way more buyers than we do houses to sell um, right now. So we're calling those people just to try to generate them getting their house back on the market because we've got three buyers sitting there waiting for them just to list it. Awesome, Interesting. Man. You're kind of like and, us. I mean, we just have we have we have so little inventory. We have so little inventory, yeah. and we're everyone's scrounging mm-hmm. around trying to you know look under you know couch cushions for sellers. You know, buyers are all over the place. And, but those are, they're like cockroaches. They're just crawling yeah. over everything, eating everything, everything that's, that's, that's around the house. But, I mean, yeah, sellers are just rare, brother. I'm glad yeah. it's not just our market because I was starting to feel guilty. No, and we're starting to see it swing a little bit where we're building our listing inventory back up to some extent. But the first six months have been tough as far as inventory. What's what's your average sale time on time on market? Um, anything below 200000 is selling usually with multiple offers uh, the day we list it or a couple of days after. Um, once we get up into the 200s, it could be as much as three months. And then 300s and 400s, it progressively gets a little bit longer. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, we'll talk about, you know, uh, how you market properties and stuff like that a little bit later on. But I, there was one more expired question that I wanted to throw at you. This is from Rick Blinn. It says, how many times do you dial an expired in order to connect with them? Um, currently, Mojo is set up to stop dialing leads after 10 attempts. Uh, guys, what have you found any sort of sweet spot or do you have like a, like a standard for your agents? Yeah, we have what we call our 10 days of pain, um, basically. So we're calling, texting, emailing if we have that information every single day for 10 days. Um, and at that point, if we can't get a hold of that person or we don't have any success, then we put them on a drip campaign and just kind of come back to them at some point later on. Cool. Okay, so you're, you're using Ben Kenny's thing then, right? Yeah. With the 10 days of pain, my uh, my team manager, Eileen, she's out on maternity leave right now. But, dude, we, no typical me, Johnson, you'll get a kick out of this. I saw my 10 days of pain. Fuck. Okay, so we got 10. What can we do with 21? <laughs> so yeah. we just re- we just reloaded over again and then added like a stop by at the very last one. Hmm. They got really annoyed. I think we should stop at 10. <laughs> yeah, 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 I don't know. yeah. I'm the only one in the world that can stand to talk to Greg McDaniel 20 days in a row. <laughs> I don't even know why I do it. I'm a glutton, a glutton for punishment. Shut up. Oh, man, my feelings man. got hurt. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, so you guys have gone from zero to 10 agents, 200 deals a year. So how did, I'm curious about like just how attracting the agents, like how have those people kind of come into you? Mm-hmm. Sure. So a lot of the people that we met initially were people that were in our personal spheres of influence that yeah. had not been in re- real estate previously. And so they saw our quick success as, as we started as individual agents. And when I say us, I'm, I'm referring to my wife and I, cause we started this team kind of together. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we kind of explained to them the formula and how it works and that we were building a team and, and, and they bought in and it's been successful for all, everyone that has. We have, uh, I'm sure it'll happen at some point, but we have no turnover on our team. Everyone's very happy. Um, everyone's very loyal to us as well, even though they're being recruited by everyone else in our market. Knocking on wood for you, buddy. Knocking on wood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, just, I mean, you threw it out there. Or someone's got to protect your sex. There we go. Yeah, I know. I feel the same way. <laughs> um, and, and quick question on just to go a little bit deeper on on the background here. When you guys jumped in, since you mentioned that you, both of you started together, did you literally jump out of teaching into the business full tilt together? Did you transition? Did one of you work while the other jumped in full time? 
So it started the first, uh, we, I got my license in June, so it was the summer, so we had three months kind of full-time, and then we both went back to school, um, and then that was our last year of teaching. So we did it part-time yeah. for that school year, um, and then transitioned full-time in June. Yeah. yeah, good move. I mean, what, what kind of move. growing pains have you experienced? I know that it's not all been rainbow, sherbet, and unicorns mm -hmm. and sunshine. So, yeah. I mean, you, you said you had zero churn. What model did you use? I mean, you're, you're Keller Williams, I'm making the presumption, right? They don't see We're a, not. We're model. actually an independent. Oh, you're independent. Okay, so you didn't model off of KW, some of their stuff from Ben and a few of the other people. Did you read Millionaire Real Estate Agent, and did you which model did you pick off of that to build a team, if you did? Yeah, so a, a little bit. Yeah, we read, we definitely read um, Millionaire Real Estate Agent, but we also subscribe to the Tom Ferry Coaching Program, and we've mm -hmm. built most of our systems and our models from what we've learned through them, and it's been phenomenal for us. Oh, Very fantastic. Cool. So when you first started out, you and your wife, you guys jump out of teaching, you're like, oh, shit, you know, let's see if this parachute opens. You know, what was the first thing you put into action to grow a team like the, like what you have, a very happy, productive, thriving, you know, you know, group and just kind of the energy you have around you? What, what do you guys put into, into position to make that happen? Because so many people, you know, they jump from whatever they're trying to do or they're trying to grow a team. They do it epically fucking backwards and mm -hmm. then they, they, they land in a mud puddle. But you guys seem to be soaring over the mountains. So, I mean, what is something that you're doing? I mean, help, help me help them. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so a couple of different things. The, I mean, the first thing that we did, which I, I think was probably the most important, was, was sign up for coaching. We needed a mentor. Mm -hmm. There was no one in our market that we felt was someone that, that could mentor us that wasn't already too busy to do that job. Um, mm -hmm. So having a coach was phenomenal for us. Uh, but then also as we recruit people on our team and as we're looking for people uh, to join us for staff as well, we're looking for people who are energetic, who are positive, who kind of have the same uh, focus and mission as we do to, to build that culture. Um, and then supporting them quickly with lead generation, because I think that's when most teams and individual agents fizzle out is when they get their license, then they don't know what to do. And so if we can support them with lead generation right away and get them going, then I help, that helps sustain them and keep them going. Yeah, a lot of the times people talk about lead gen. I mean, and you guys are doing expired. You guys are doing pretty much a lot of the, across the board. You're, we're going to talk about what you're doing on live, which I think is fantastic, which I've been trying to browbeat Johnson and doing, but he doesn't want to do it, damn it. Talking to the consumer, man. Talking to the consumer. Oh, talking to the consumer. Yeah. Gosh. So I'll, I'll carry that I'll carry that torch. Where are you? you? Have fun I will carry it. That's right. <laughs> No, but I, you know, you know, all joking around, I think it's really, really cool, and I can't wait to talk about it a little bit more. You know, when it comes to lead generation, don't laugh at me, Johnson. I have feelings. But um, once I'm but, not laughing at you, James, oh, James, James Colburn oh. is watching us live and says, okay, I'm here. So, yes, uh, we have two more wishes left, James. We appreciate yes. it. We thank you for watching. And I bought his book. I bought your book, James, and I finished all my days of writing. Here are my days. Of, I finished my, my uh, today's cards. Um, but you know what? What does lead generation mean for a new agent? Did you dump uh, 150,000 leads on them? Did you give them two? Did you give them you know, two a week? I mean, how did that grow so you didn't, you didn't freak them out going, oh, my God, I have so much to follow up with. Where do I start? Yeah, we started with freaking them out. Um, so because our team it started Shocking with up. us and, and we grew, we, uh, we threw too many leads at our team at once, and we didn't have enough people to support the number of leads that we had coming in. Um, so what we've done is we've kind of we've grown our team without growing the number of leads yet until people are comfortable and they, they understand how to follow up and work those leads. Um, and whether that's not only expired and sphere of influence and social media, but also, of course, the paid leads that everyone does, Realtor.com, Zillow, um, all those areas as well. Are you finding those to be any kind of value? I mean, obviously you are. I'm doing another type of lead gen from another source from online. Do they suck mm -hmm. balls on a hot day? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just just nasty drippiness and just nothing is there yeah. of, of substance. It's, it's just a numbers game with those. I mean, you got to know that only three or four out of a hundred are going to close. And we found more success with, with certain platforms in our area than others. And, and we have teams in other parts of the country that are telling us the opposite. And so I think yeah. it's kind of geographically dependent. Interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. it has to be. I mean, I'm not quite at a hundred plus leads from this source yet. So whenever I do, cause I'm beta testing a, another source, Matt, I'll tell you off air. Um, you know, yeah. and I'm just, it's just interesting. I feel like I should know about this, but okay. You don't know everything about me, Johnson. Yeah, I have yeah, my yeah. private life too. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's interesting about it is that, uh, so you mentioned like realtor.com and truly and stuff like that. What, what I tend to hear about those from people across the country is that, yes, we pay two to five times the amount per lead for those leads, but they tend to close 
much, much higher than your average pay-per-click lead, which is in that, you know, three out of 100. So, right. so it sounds like you're not necessarily seeing a higher closing rate uh, on those leads like Realtor.com and Trulia. So have you, is that because you've tested it with just straight pay-per-click leads to a website and you found that you like the conversion rate better? So it's worth, you know, it's worth still following up on those. Cause I know a lot of people that have dropped yeah. the Trulia's and the Realtor.com's cause they can go straight to pay-per-click, mm -hmm. send people to their website and still get three out of a hundred. So the, the only way it's worth paying for those is if they close at a higher percentage. Does that make sense? Right. So I'm just curious what your thoughts are. Yeah, and we're seeing a much higher close weight rate with uh, Realtor.com for whatever reason than we are Zillow and Homes and Truly and the other websites. Um, we feel it's necessary to still have a presence on those because, as you know, Zillow is the number one search real estate site. And so, especially in our, our key areas, we feel like we have to be one of those top three agents, more more so even just for a billboard and branding than, than for lead gen uh, gotcha. because we don't want our listings being, you know, them calling another agent. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How, makes dare sense. They do, how, how dare they do that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So unpolite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, All right. So uh, before we dig a little bit deeper, I want to just give you a chance to tell people again, kind of the area that you work in so they can keep you in mind for referrals. So you are within an hour and a half of Wilmington, which is the suburbs of Delaware. What's, what's kind of the main market areas that you serve by name specifically? Yeah, so our team spans all three counties in Delaware. We only have three counties since we're a pretty small state. Um, our hub is in Sussex County, which is the lower portion of Delaware. So we cover all the way from the Maryland lines over to the beaches, Rehoboth, Lewis, some of the resort areas as well, um, and then on up to, to Wilmington. So are you near awesome. Milford or Georgetown or something like that? Or Yep, very close to Milford and Georgetown. We do a lot of business in those areas. Okay, so Dover and all these different areas. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Dude, I'm hooking you up, homie. I'm giving them a graphic. <laughs> Delaware is really small, so if you if you think Delaware, we can cover it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so think Delaware. Um, all right, so uh, then for us, before we dive in, um, guys, just wanted to remind you real quick about Get Now Business. I alluded to it earlier that Greg will not be working on July 3rd. He's already informed us of that. So the next Get Now oh, Business Lord. class starts on July 10th the second Monday uh, in July, and then continuing for every Monday for the rest of the month. Uh, fortunately, there are five Mondays in July, so Greg looked out on this one. It works out quite nicely for him. But uh, go to getnowbusiness.com and you can learn more about that live class. Uh, just like it sounds, it is exactly how to strategically target the two types of people uh, that you need to contact in order to actually put commissions into your pocket in the next 90 days, all with the zero cold calling, all with uh, zero door knocking, and no crazy marketing budget. So that's what I have to say about that. Greg, anything you want to add before we move on? No, dude, you guys are going to miss out big time if you don't sign up for it. Matt and I are putting some really cool stuff together. We are toying with some opportunities to be mixing and matching, kind of like we're going to be like master chefs up in the kitchen for a real estate uh, trans, uh, transaction uh you know, everything, you know, learning, you know, our different courses, we're going to be like taking a pinch of this and a dab of that and a, just lump it into this and serve it up to you for a new, maybe some new programs, guys, which I think is going to serve all the personalities, including all of Matt's 15 that he hides from us. His, uh, his, his inter agoraphobe that we see on a, on a weekly basis. We love him. We love him a lot, but we're going to see a lot more of Matt in our different, in our different classes. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. Damn it. I went through all that. Not a single fucking nose pinch, Johnson. No, Damn it. no you, get no, you get no nose pinch for that one. Absolutely no. I will not give you the satisfaction. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. All right. So, Dustin, let's get back into kind of the lead generation side of things. You started off, you're a solo agent. You've got your, your wife with you kind of jumping into the business. You start calling expireds. What was your experience? experience like in the early days, like just dipping your toe into those waters. Uh, how did you feel about it? How did you start to see real improvement in the very early days? Yeah, I was really, really nervous at first, not knowing the first thing about real estate because the class doesn't doesn't teach you anything. You know, it's yeah. just how to stay out of trouble, basically. And so and I didn't have a mentor until we signed up for coaching. So calling those expires was very nerve wracking at first. Um, but the more we did it, the more confidence we got and the more we started role playing. Um, that certainly helped as well. Yeah. Um, but we, we started doing it and what we found to our surprise, because through the Tom Ferry organization, you know, we're talking with people in California and Texas and New York and everyone's calling expired. We were the only ones sometimes calling these people. And so mm. if they're only getting one call and we're delivering them a pretty good message and a pretty good script, it's, it's pretty easy to get the appointment in our market. So why, why, why is it so uncouth in your area <laughs> to call expired? We're talking about like the whole, like everyone thinks it's their own ex-girlfriend, like don't talk to her, don't touch her, don't look at her, don't even think about looking at her on Facebook kind of a thing. Yeah. Know, why is that? 
I, I don't know if it's just like a good old boys kind of network here because we uh, in Sussex County, especially in Delaware, we're we're almost like the southern half of the country and, and northern Delaware is like the northern half of the country in terms of culture and lifestyle. Um, and so people have been entrenched in their real estate business for 30 years. The average age of a realtor in our area is like 62. Um, and so they've got a big client base and they don't like that their client base is now um, you know, going in a different direction potentially uh, with expired. They just have those clients for life without having to work for it as much. Yeah, that's because they started out with their database on three by five cards. Shit's <laughs> changed a little bit since back in those days. I know the, I know the type, dude. My dad's in his mid 60s, early 60s. Mm -hmm. But legitimately, I mean, that's when the MLS was delivered in a cab. Yeah, in, in a three yeah. by three in three ring binder. I mean, of course they're gonna think, you know, why would you call my client? Because they 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 have they've locked ownership onto them. Because back then that, they did own the client. I mean, there was really a hard way to right. get a hold of these folks. So I get that mentality. What kind of backlash, or is it has there been any kind of backlash for you, you know, from other agents for going after? Well, no going after air quotes their clients yeah, when so in reality so you're manifested in like offers being harder to get accepted and just agents like being uh, a little bit less cooperative with you um not necessarily with offers but but being less cooperative i would say we're we are we're the new kids on the block and things have been done a certain way for a long time and i think because we've kind of disrupted things in our industry even just things as simple as like our branding everyone mm -hmm. else here whether they're with a major brand um it's very much a branded sign to that brand Whereas our team is the branding on our sign and our logo and everything that we do. And that's that's new to our area. And it kind of makes people uncomfortable because they've never seen it before. Yeah. Justin, rock and roll to you, dude. Knuckles player. Mm -hmm. The reason Thank why you. I say that is that what we that's what we do. But we're running into, you know, Cal, you know, California Association. You know, we're saying, look, now the broker brand and the team brand need to be e equal size. Are you guys seeing the same thing on your side or you, can you just brand your your team over the brokerage? So we've heard rumblings of that coming, uh, but we don't have any any rules or regulations regarding that now. All we have to do is have the brokerage name and office number on all of our marketing, which we do. But our team is definitely the predominant thing that people see. Yeah, we used to make it literally, <laughs> literally the largest an eye, the largest font a naked eye could see, and then that's what we, we used to put on our business cards. I mean, you you, you we could yeah. draw a line through it with the end of this pen and you'd cover the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> that that's basically what we do. <laughs> it's like, it's like yeah. four, four point font or something like that. It's like yeah. Times New Roman point. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, I've I've heard there's um I mean there, there's all kinds of rumblings. There there was something there was some law passed. What was it? South Carolina just here recently. Their real estate commission got a law passed that made it um you know virtually impossible to even say that you're a real estate team uh mm -hmm. to your consumers. You had to lead with like your brokerage name and uh all this stuff. So yeah, there's definitely there's an old guard of people out there that. Um, they they just don't believe in they don't believe in real estate teams at all yeah. they believe everything should be done you know relationship which is fine i get it but um you know don't don't make it difficult for the rest of us that are trying to provide value just in a different way because if right. the client has an honest choice between well do i want a team where i have like individual specialists that are serving me in different ways or do i want to deal with one person all the way through it should be their choice and they should be able to make that choice intelligently without being like hobbled in the marketplace to where you can't even tell people hey here's why i'm different here's why i feel like i'm right. better than this person over here so yeah I, I get that but uh so it's not hurting too much obviously but there was maybe a little lack of uh of cooperation there it sounds like yeah and 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 we have the compliance police that are always out looking to mm -hmm. make sure that we are compliant which we are 100 percent of the time uh, but we still get the calls and our broker gets the calls constantly just to make sure that we are because they're watching of course they are, because they're waiting for you to screw up, because they're waiting to pounce, man, like a, <laughs> like right. a leopard hiding in a tree, just ready to jump out and get you. But that's okay. That means you're doing something right. You got a couple of haters, dude, rock and roll. You're going to keep on yeah. moving forward. You're going to keep growing. Speaking of growing, right. how big is your team, and how big do you want to get? Sure. So like I said, we're about 10 agents right now, and then we have three admin. Um, we are at a size level now, I think, where we can sustain about 200 transactions a year. Um, however... If we grow beyond that, which of course we hope to, um, then we will need to add not only additional agents, but additional support. Um, mm -hmm. We have a transaction coordinator who manages all of our transactions. Obviously, she is probably at her limit at this point. Uh, yeah. We have a listing uh, coordinator. We have a, what we call our team coordinator, who's a licensed realtor who kind of works with all of us to help us out. Um, and then we just promoted a realtor on our team um, to be the team manager as well, to kind of oversee the admin and, and work with them to, to be streamline their systems. 
That's very cool. That is fantastic. It's the, it's the best way to go. I mean, once you get the right people in, in the right seats on the bus, then everything streamlines itself, and it's so 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 efficient. You can't imagine doing it another way. If you were to bring on a new agent today, what are three attributes and qualities that you would look for? In case you know, we got people all over the country watching this, so hey, maybe, maybe there's a great agent out there that would love to join you. I mean, what's mm-hmm. what's something that they that if they have these qualities, they should be giving you a holler. Yeah, we want someone who's not already been jaded by some of the negativity in our business. Um, someone we prefer, someone fresh, new that we can kind of train and mold to do things how we think things should be done. Uh, because at the end of the day, our goal is to provide clients with a customer experience that's unmatched to anyone else. And so, if they're coming into it with negativity or they've got habits already that are going to be difficult to break, they're probably not going to be a good fit for our team. Um, but if they have a positive outlook, if they're optimistic, if they're willing to learn and willing to work hard, then we can make anyone a successful agent we feel on our team. I love that idea. So many people, so many brokerages, you know, don't want to bring on new agents because of the, the opposite, like there is no training, they're fresh and they want someone who has got some experience, got some book of business, but you're like, hey, give me all the newbies that I can possibly handle that are, that are mm-hmm. self-starting, positive, will want to learn and, and have a team mindset, bring it on, Cupcake, let's go. Absolutely. You know? That's a hundred percent our philosophy and our, our team culture, I think is, is really good because of that. Everyone's learning and growing together. And so as we do that, everyone's kind of injecting not only what they're learning into everyone else, but they're looking at things from a different perspective too, instead of someone who's been in the business for 30 years and this is how they used to do things, but it's not necessarily how we're doing things today. Yeah. That is good. That's one of the things that I like the most. Matt and I, you know, love to continually learn and educate. That's why we're always trading book ideas back and forth. Well, mainly I'm, he's giving me books because he reads a lot more than I do. Um, but it is, it is good to be in the, in the environment of, edu- of continual education. My father, who is an avid reader, you know, that's one of the things he's always told me is that uh, without a doubt, the number one thing you need to do in this business is be in a continual state of curiosity and education because you need to work on your business and in your business. So in your business, the day-to-day grind, on your business is education, seminars, books, podcasts, whatever else. Okay. Coaching, you know, mm-hmm. because you, if you're the smartest man in the room, get out of the room. I mean, you need yeah. to, you need to feel like a mental midget because that's when you really grow. Right. And, and absolutely. Want, I'm sure you guys are putting your people through the, through the test. You know, what's, are there books that you have your people read right off the bat? Or, I mean, what's some of the good yeah. stuff, man? Yeah, we encourage everyone to read The Millionaire Real Estate Agent. Obviously, it's a great book, great resource. Um, I do think that Keller Williams has a great training package, and so we've done some of that training with them. Um, But we're plugging them into the Tom Ferry system as quickly as we can get them in there because that's what got us to the level that we're at, and I think that's going to help all of our agents get to this level very quickly as well. Um, Every day, we're sending out different podcasts for them to listen to and watch. We're big on Tony Robbins and uh, Tim Ferriss, and so all the big ones just – not even real estate related, but ones that are working on your mindset and, and, and body and mental health because those things are just as important as, as the business. Yeah, that's awesome. awesome. So big. I actually had an older broker who actually used to be our team, our manager here in our office. Uh, he came in and he, and Matt, I didn't tell you this. I was going to tell you this. He's, he wants to write a book. He wants to co-author it with me, which I was totally baffled by. And I actually used your model. Like, good, we'll record it, and then we'll have it transcribed into writing. <laughs> Easiest way yep. to go about it. Yep. Uh, Because Matt's writing a book with a couple of co-authors, which is going to be an awesome, awesome, awesome book. But it's important to always read those types of people and think outside the box of real estate. Don't just stay in the real estate box. Go read Entrepreneurial Magazine. Go read, you know, Inc. Mag. Go read read all these people that are out there hustling and have their own businesses. Because, I mean, Dustin, tell me if I'm wrong, dude. I bet you anything that you plucked little goodness goodness pieces from other, you know, industries that have nothing to do with real estate and plugged plugged them into your business, right? Yeah, one of the best um, podcasts that we listened to recently was actually a Tony Robbins one. He was at one of his business mastery events, and he he had a panel of people that he was interviewing. And one of the companies that that he interviewed was the CEO of Soul Cycle. I don't yes. know if you guys have those in your I market. I listened to that one. I listened we don't to that have one. them. We don't have them here, so it was enlightening to me just for that sense. But it was incredible because that's exactly what we want to do in real estate. What they're doing in Soul Cycle, and it's create a customer experience. It's it's create yeah. that white glove, top-notch level service that mm-hmm. no one else is doing, and, and they've built that. And it's it's become a culture and a brand, I think, that goes mm-hmm. beyond their industry. Yeah, it really is. They said, they, they in that interview, she said that it was curtains up and curtains down every 45 minutes, completely yep. new production, completely new cast. 
and they had to be 100% spot on every single time exactly the way it was done 45 minutes ago. But the same oh, enthusiasm, right. the same energy, the same everything. So everybody walks out of there going, hmm, that was a damn good class. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I need to go back and listen to that episode. I missed that one. Um, okay, so James Colburn says, Greg, let me know if you need an editor. He is the same one as Hal Elrod's book, which is a, which is a huge win. So, Greg, there you go. You got to hook up to an editor. Uh, and then Scott Marple has a great transitioning question. Such great timing, Scott. Outside of cold calling and door knocking, what are some things he's doing to find sellers? So let's transition, Dustin. Let's go into uh, some of the stuff you guys are doing on Facebook Live because uh, yeah. this is something that's super easy to find. You can literally just search the hashtag Parker Group Live and, and – see what you guys are doing but give us kind of an inside peek on what you're doing what kind of results you're seeing with facebook live yeah we knew that video was kind of the future that facebook and all social media was headed towards and so we wanted to figure out a way that we could capitalize on that as much as as much as possible and so we started what we call parker group live which is usually just a five or ten minute video with either myself or my wife or both of us and we may bring in a guest from time to time to cover a topic that we've had come up that week um, it could be something about helping someone buy a house, someone, uh, something about helping people to sell a house. Um, but it's been really informative, especially for our specific area, because no one was really giving consumers information unless they were calling the real estate agent and asking them specifically. And so we were feeding that to them. And then, of course, we're boosting it on Facebook, um, Instagram, YouTube, email, all these different mediums. And it's been, it's been really successful for us. And as people are seeing those videos, we found that when we're going to new places and there's a room full of people that we don't even know, they know us already because we're boosting them so much and they've seen our faces so many times. And I think the key to, to our success with that has been being consistent. Mm -hmm. Other people in our market have, have kind of dabbled and tried to do a live video or even a recorded video here and there. But if you don't do it every single week and you're consistent with it, then people just kind of glaze over and ignore it. Yeah. They really, they really, really do. That's something that when Matt and I started the podcast, we are one of the things that we were absolutely neurotic on is consistency. So we started off slow. I'm sure you guys did too. And then you, we grew into the three times a week. And if I had my day way, we would do it five times a week, but Matt would probably shoot me from down South. <laughs> like, no, I get a break every other day. Uh, <laughs> but it, it, it is really important because we have a lot of folks like right now we have 45 people that are watching this live. We'll have thousands of views later because they know when to show up to get mm -hmm. some knowledge at a zero cost with a little bit of entertainment and some great guests mm -hmm. like yourself. And I think that really is key. But do, do, are you doing how many of you do? Are you doing a day? I'm sure you, I'm sure you told up me, but I'm, I, I forgot how many live videos you're doing a week. So we're just doing one a week and we've been consistent with that. Okay. Now, if we're at an open house or we have something come up, then we may throw another one in there randomly, but our consistency is that we do it once a week. Cool. Okay. And I just put a link in guys for a live video camera that's going to shoot in 4K. Uh, this is a really nice camera. It's about a six or $700 camera. Um, this, this, is one, this is the one I was telling you about. I, I shot you yeah. the link to, but uh, my, my tech guy just raves on this. So if you guys really want to do something on the next level, or like really, really, really good quality stuff, has a gimbal in it, so it stays really steady when you move around. So just take a look at it, guys. Hopefully that'll help you out. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Um, and so give us an, an idea on. Let, let's go before we go into kind of how, like how you find your topics and uh, and how you guys actually shoot the the videos. Let's talk about just maximizing them on the back end. So once you're doing a Facebook Live, you guys are doing some other things with it behind the scenes just to kind of leverage it more and more. Tell me what that process is, who's actually doing the work, um, and how you kind of structured that out. Yeah. So Rachel, my wife, is is our marketing director. Um, so she's the one that kind of does all the back end marketing uh, things for our team. And so she's setting up Facebook, she's setting up our email, she's setting up YouTube so that as soon as we go live and once it finishes, it's, it's then going out to all those different channels. So people are being hit with it through several different mediums that same day. Um, mm. So we see a pretty big spike in those watches um, throughout the day. And then we usually end up, as we boost it, having four to 5,000 people view each and every one of those live videos. Okay. Um, how many different Facebook groups are you guys a part of? Or do you have admin status on, you know, pages um, or groups? Probably three to four different okay. groups. My, local, uh, local community groups, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. Cool. Yeah, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna send you guys a link to a program that I use. Like right now, we've shared out to 18 shares on this video without have, us having to do anything. It's called Live Leap. I'll send you guys. I'll send you a link on it here in the chat. Okay. Um, dude, it's it's like 19 bucks a month, bro, and it does yeah. everything automatically for you. It's a lifesaver, and it'll give you thousands of views. Yeah, awesome. 
Awesome. Yep. And then, uh, so tell me a little bit about how, like what happens to the video after it goes out to, uh, to Facebook and like you guys are throwing it up on YouTube, all kinds of stuff like that. And then you're boosting it. Let, take me through that a little bit. And who's, uh, so she's doing the work on the back end, but, uh, like, how are right. you boosting it? How are you getting, uh, like YouTube traffic on it? Yeah. So we're, we're boosting it through specific, um, specific targeted areas, obviously mm -hmm. geographically. Um, so kind of the areas that we like to farm most, but also yeah. demographically, uh, we have kind of picked out our ideal, uh, buyer and seller. And so depending on the video, that's who we're targeting. Awesome. Um, and we found that that person, uh, for us is most likely going to be someone between the ages of 25 and 55. So although yeah. our area is flooded with retirees moving, um, to the, the tax advantageous state of Delaware, um, to retire. Um, not that we're ignoring that segment of our market, but that's not who we're targeting with this because those aren't the people that we would reach through this medium anyway. Hmm. Okay. okay. You know what's, your what's the deal? What's the deal with the tax, uh, the tax status in Delaware? Do you guys have so, no like state income tax or something? So no sales tax. And then our property taxes are, are nationally, I think the lowest in the nation. So on an average home here in, in Delaware, you can expect to pay less than a thousand dollars a year in property taxes. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's, that's everybody in California issued a collective groan. <laughs> that's like, oh, you did you say a month? Oh no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we get that question. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. All right, so that's why so you've got those people flooding in, but that's not you intentionally don't really market to that crowd, even though that is that that is like an influx of people. You don't really go after them. Yeah, that's not our target market. And, and again, we do work with lots of buyers and sellers in, in that range, um, but that's not who we're targeting. We found that we can close the transaction much smoother, much easier with what we know best, which is which was those folks between 25 and 55. And specifically, we've targeted women in that demographic as well uh, with our branding, with our focus as a team, um, because we found that 80 percent of the time, the woman in the household is the one making the home buying or selling decision anyway. Mm -hmm. And so let's not waste time with us dumb guys, you know, with our marketing, what we're doing and just focus on who's actually making the decisions. Now we know, now we know why you have such a happy marriage. You, you know, you're on straight. <laughs> exactly. I always joke oh, around that, man, like, you know, funny. women are so nice to us. You know, they let us think that we run the ship, but as soon as there's a big decision she made, she's like, they're those, like, they put the screws down. And we're like, okay, okay, okay. We're good. Yeah. <sighs> Thank you, ladies, for letting us think. Says, we're, we're says the there. unmarried Greg. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing how that it, works that way. Do not take relationship <laughs> advice from me, obviously. Uh, oh, man, that's <laughs> funny. Yeah, relationship <laughs> advice dispensed by single guys. <laughs> Ooh, that should be a video. <laughs> not me, but Greg, yes. Anyway, <laughs> that should be. Yeah, that's a whole other, that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> it's like a Saturday Night Live shit. Advice dispensed by single guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> While drinking. guys. <laughs> drinking, you know, dogs playing cards in the background as a major poster, you That's know, right. wearing 1970s garb. Okay. No, <laughs> All right. So you guys are literally, you're boosting it in, you're boosting it geographically to the areas that you want to work in. Makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. You can drop that pin in, get it yeah. mile, five miles, whatever. And then demographically, you want to hit your age group, the people that are most likely to be your ideal client and you're, you know, tilting towards targeting women on Facebook. Uh, there are there are rumors that you that may that functionality may actually be taken away or you may be able to be penalized or charged after the fact by trying to market yourself or put your real estate marketing in front of a certain demographic of, of people. So it'd be interesting to see how that changes. But now it's like a great it's a great opportunity for a land grab for you guys now, because if nobody else is doing it in your area, you can hammer those Facebook ads home. You can boost your Facebook lives, drive people to your website, pixel them. And then you have the right to market to them after the fact without breaking any rules, right? You're just saying, hey, yeah. I'm just remarketing to the people that visit my website. You know, right, right. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a great opportunity. We had Glenn Twiddle uh, on the show who's doing, you know, we're doing some events and stuff with him. He's talking about just how cheap it is to buy eyeballs on Facebook video and Facebook live yeah. right now. We're talking about two to three cents a view. I, I would venture to say it might even be lower in your area. Yeah, Facebook is definitely by far our biggest bang for buck. I mean, we're paying ridiculous rates for Zillow, Realtor.com, and some of the other lead gen sources that we're using, but Facebook is just killing it with the ROI for us. Cool. Hmm. So Gosh. how do they come into So the lead, like when you say like it generates leads, are you saying, um, so are people coming in, do they, do they reach out by messaging you on Facebook? Do they comment on videos and then you follow up? Or do they reach out by coming in through the door of your website and then you find out afterwards it's because they saw something on Facebook? Yeah, a little bit of all of the above. We get, we get several messages a day from people who viewed our videos. They do comment and share it as well. 
Um, mm -hmm. But then and what we're really ultimately trying to do is send them to our landing pages so that we can capture that information and learn where it is that they live and what we can do to help them. Um, and we target more seller leads than we do buyer leads through Facebook. And we've had a lot of success with that. Mm -hmm. um, in our market, we're carrying about anywhere between 40 and, and 60 listings at any given time. And so we're Goodness. really, really heavy as a team on the listing side. And so that's what we try to focus and push all the people to in terms of our sellers landing pages. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's very, very really cool. good stuff. That's a lot. That's a, those are a lot. I mean, that's very, very seller heavy, uh, like you said. I mean, do you do you encourage your 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 agents to go after predominant listings, or do you guys you know do you have a buyer specialist as well, or do you yeah, just I meant to ask that earlier. Do you have do you, are they specialists or are they generalists? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we do have one buyer specialist on our team who who is helping to train new agents on working with buyers, and then re the rest of the agents on our team are more generalist. Um, although they lean heavy on the buyer side and I tend to lean much more heavy on the listing side. Okay. Yeah. So they have, it's basically open choice to all and they just gravitate towards buyers because right now they're newer and it's easier and all that, just the normal stuff. Exactly. Cool. That makes sense. All right. Um, so let's talk about the, the, soul, the, the sphere part of it, the, uh, the sphere of influence part. So obviously you guys are keeping in touch with them on social mm -hmm. media. What else are you guys doing and, and how, what's kind of what, tell me a little about your structure, like your system for how you're generating leads from your sphere. Yep, absolutely. So we, uh, we use a really cool CRM that, I, that we like a lot. It's Firepoint. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. <laughs> nice. Um, Chris is a good dude. But yeah, dude, I just tried to yeah. get a hold of Chris today. How dare he tell, not pick tell, up your phone tell call? Tell him they're doing a good job. <laughs> I know. Good. Yeah, That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but we're uh, we're plugging our, our sphere of influence into that on a daily basis and setting them on campaigns so that we remind ourselves to follow up with them. And we're just okay. calling, emailing, Facebook, and to check in, touch base with them, not to ask them if they're buying or selling a house, but just to kind of remind them that we still exist. Um, and then we're mailing our geographic farms, which includes a lot of our sphere of influence as well. That's awesome. Yeah. If you guys want to know about FirePoint, just take a gander at my screen here. If this thing will focus in on me, this is FirePoint. It's not focusing. Anyways, it's FirePoint. Good stuff. I yeah, love yeah. their system. And the, you know, the other thing I like about it the most is the fact that it not only tracks where the lead came from, but it tracks where the conversion point was. Was it email number two, five? Was it a phone call? Was it this action or that action? So you know where to double down and where to really, really hone in, you know, your, 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 your time, your money, your skills, your energy, and everything else. I think a lot of times once yeah. you get it set up, people don't really understand how important that is. You know, Justin, for you guys, are you, where have you found that probably would have astounded you before, you know, where it said like, okay, well, I got this lead from Zillow, but the conversion point was blah. And then you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. And then you double down on something and you're able to get, you know, squeeze a few more deals out, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we're finding that if you stop after five attempts at contacting them, you're going to miss a ton of leads that, that are still there. We just haven't been able to reach them yet. Um, and what we found, especially with the Zillow and Realtor.com leads is, they're not loyal to you. They're going to keep calling around to other realtors, other buyer's agents, other listing agents, and we have to constantly be in their ear to get them to make that sale with us um, or we'll lose them really easily. Yeah, some of the things that I laugh about a lot is that people always say, well, I called them once and they didn't call me back. It's like, dude, that's because you didn't get a hold of them. They went on to five other people's websites and or you know third party websites and all registered all of their sites because they're after their own selfish interests which is helping them buy or sell a piece of property just because right. they went to yours does not mean you're exclusive you like you like what you guys are doing five six seven eight ten twenty however many times it takes get in yeah. touch with these people eighty percent of all deal eighty percent of all business is done between the fifth and the twelfth contact mm -hmm. and I mean a lot of your agents probably thought that they're annoying the the, the, the prospects but they're not are they they're not at all, and that and that's another reason why we we prefer to have brand new agents because if you tell an agent who's been doing this for 15 years that they need to follow up with a lead 12 times to make that conversion, they they're not going to do it. There's just no way. They just kind of throw their hands up. But we're to the point now where if we can't get a hold of them through phone, text, or email, we're finding them on Facebook, we're finding them on LinkedIn, we're finding them on Twitter, and although we still may not convert that lead at that point, we've now established some sort of a relationship with them where when they're ready to buy or when they're ready to sell they're thinking back to us because they're seeing our newsfeed now or they're seeing our name on their social media platforms. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, let's talk about uh, leverage a little bit. And um, I'm curious on your own personal database, since you are kind of in the process of building out the team and probably scaling out and maybe withdrawing a little bit from production, have you hit the point where 
you are having the agents on your team follow up with your personal sphere of influence? And, and if so, how's that going? We haven't yet. Uh, we haven't gotten to that point yet. That's ultimately a goal of ours to be able to do that. What we have done is we've been, even within our sphere of influence, as we've converted leads that we know are ready to buy or sell, we're then handing them off to our team members to go ahead and finish the deal. Oh, really? Um, at that point. So we're cultivating the leads in some cases for the appointment, or taking them taking them on the appointment, or handing it off literally before you go into an appointment. Uh, it depends on the situation. If it's a brand new agent, sometimes we'll go on the appointment with them, and then they'll take it from there. At that point, um, if it's someone who's a little bit more seasoned and knows our systems, then we'll hand it to them before we even get the appointment and just have that person show up at the appointment. Sweet, that's awesome, man. Mm. I love yeah, that. I can see you, Greg. I can see both. Of, like for your team, as it grows, I can see you doing both. Like mm -hmm. if you bring on brand new agents, you put them through the system and yeah, you do like your 90 day onboarding, but I can see you going on listing appointments, like the first two to five with somebody new, you know, as they transition from buyer heavy to listing heavy and all that stuff. Yeah. I, I think that works really well. I talked to, um, it's been a few months ago, but I talked to Jeff Quinton in, uh, he's on the Jersey shore, ocean city, if I remember right. And he took his listing partner on over a hundred listing wow. presentations to get him, wow. to get him ready. He's no joke. He's not messing around. Like he no. wanted that conversion rate to be like 85% yeah. before he turned it over. Um, so yeah, it's not nothing, you know, you don't have to go to that extent, but anything that you do where you do take your agents on appointments and they get to see and like learn by mm -hmm. osmosis, how you do it and the right way to do it, the right way to conduct a listing presentation has got to be, it's got to be huge for their development. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, and we still we still go on every single listing appointment with our team at this point. Buyers, oh, we don't go for listings. Yeah, we feel like showing up as a group. So my wife and I both go along with the agent. Uh, really brings a really strong, serious presence to that seller and let them know that we're a team. We're not just an individual agent, and we mm -hmm. can articulate that I think pretty well. And our conversion rate for listings once we get that appointment is is really high. Um, it's about ninety percent for any appointment that we get for a listing. Dude, Are you like splitting you. it up so that you should like take a different part of the listing presentation, like your wife does the marketing and stuff like that? Absolutely. We've got our we've got our set scripts down. Basically, we go through the presentation together. Um, mm -hmm. She does the pretty marketing things, and I do the uh, the tough price conversation usually at the mm -hmm. end. Um, mm -hmm. And so we go through that together. And then the agent has has pieces too, where they kind of jump in and and focus on some areas of specialty that they have. Now, do you do you give the seller a heads up, obviously, that there's going to be more than one person show, showing up? So when they open their front, they're like, holy crap, they're, what, what, what am I getting robbed? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We let them know that we're going to bring we're going to bring our team with us. And there's always always at least two of us there for those appointments. That's cool. It is powerful. I, I remember when uh, Terry, Chris and I, my two partners and I would go on listing appointments together. It was a very powerful presence. Um, and we definitely give them heads up that three dudes are going to be at their front door at 7 p.m. Like. <laughs> Yeah. Here you go on six five. I'll take the china and then the silver. You can follow that out with I was it. Say, it's got to look like you showed up and it's uh, uh, like a religious organization is moving through the neighborhood, passing out flyers. Like, yeah. Hey, we're here. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I'm just picturing Greg and like his, his nice white shirt and black tie and yeah. With my backpack and my bike. That's right. No. 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 We, we we do give them a heads up and I think it's important. I mean to. <clears throat> and also. Starts off with the ability of the communication that they're going to be able to receive from you right from the very beginning, what to expect. Here's the process. This is when I'm going to be there, blah, blah, blah. So they can feel comfortable in the, in, the, in every situation from that, from that point forward. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And it, I think it helps for our team too, that eight out of the 10 agents on our team are actually females. And so showing up with two females automatically gives them a little bit more comfort with the situation, because like you said, showing up with three big dudes may, may be a little bit intimidating for some sellers. <laughs> uh, so many uh, comments. That's funny. Oh man. Let's, <laughs> let's finish out with this. Um, are you doing, uh, doing anything else like events and things like that to, uh, to reach out and keep in touch with your sphere? Yeah, definitely. We, uh, we have a lot of festivals in our area. I don't know if you guys to do where you're at, but, um, to have a big festival um, and and we have one in my local town that's called the Apple Scrapple Festival because we have something out here called Scrapple. You've probably never heard of it, but it's basically everything nasty in the pig that no one else wants to eat. Um, they create this product, this meatloaf called called Scrapple. And so this is something that you eat? That. You're not getting punished to eat this, but you actually eat it? For <laughs> no, it's amazing. <laughs> okay. It's incredible. God, just so we have a, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> we have a festival that kind of that kind of celebrates that and informs people about it. And we have 40,000 people a year that come to it. 
And so, of course, we have wow. a presence there with a booth and we're out, we're handing out stuff and just being a presence in the community. We're involved with the, the Lions Club and different local organizations as well. I think is really important for our sphere of influence to see us out there outside of mm -hmm. our professional platform. And, and then are using those events to like uh, then stay in touch, invite people out, let, let people know in your database that you're going to be there. Absolutely. Yeah. And we, and we yeah. see, because it is a kind of a small town feel in the area that we live in, we're seeing people that we work with on a daily basis, whether it's out to eat or it's at kids or at events or whatever it might be. We're just, I think the more that you can be out in the community that you work in, the better it's going to be for your business. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. I mean, this thing is live entertainment, uh, over 500 crafters and vendors and delicious food. That's a, I mean, the pictures, the, I'm just reading what it says. Um, but it, uh, I think it's. Greg, I think Greg froze up on us. Man, what happened? Yeah. That's funny. Applescrapple.com. He actually put the link in the comments. That's hilarious. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Apple Scrapple. We completely lost Greg. He'll he'll jump on here in a second. But the so that's cool. So the next level for you guys is bring on some more agents. You are going yeah. to be leveraging up and kind of withdrawing yourself from from production and training people to kind of take more of an active role in the listings and having them follow up with your personal sphere of of, uh, of influence. And then what are you guys doing to kind of scale up the lead generation side? Like you've got your Realtor.com, your Trulys, your stuff like that. Is there a next step for you guys or is it just more like is everything in place and then it's just kind of doing more of what's already working or is there another piece to add to that equation? Yeah, so part of it is, is just doing more of what we're already doing. Um, but the second piece of that is is we want to grow in different markets as well. And so okay. most of our team predominantly lives and, and practices real estate in the lower portion of our state. And so we've just brought on two new agents to be in the northern portion of our state. Um, and our, our, our county that we live in is very split. We have a very um, beachy resort community on the eastern side of our county and then a very agrarian rural side of our community on the western side. And so we want to make sure that we have people and hubs in all of those areas to capture leads and, and generate more business from those different markets because they're completely different uh, from one another. Hmm. That's interesting. That's crazy with it just, you know, what'd you say, an hour, hour and a half drive to get across the entire state and you've got yeah. two completely different demographics of people. Exactly. So in the area that we live, I mentioned that our average price point is like 195. If we just drive 20 to 30 minutes east, the average price point jumps up to about 350. And so there's a oh, big wow. jump in price. Yeah, Damn. significant jump. Yeah, no kidding. That's awesome. Yeah, you definitely want more of those, unless they're yes. unless they're insanely hard to sell. They, you definitely want more of those. Um, okay, so so you're basically in Lower and now Upper Delaware. So what's the best way to, to uh, connect with you guys, learn more about you, keep you in mind for referrals, and uh, if we have somebody, how can we reach out to you? Yeah, check us out on Facebook. We're very active on Facebook, um, Instagram, and then our website is just DelawareMove.com. It's DelawareMove.com. Um, all of our contact information is on there, but we'd, we'd love to have your referrals, uh, coming into Delaware. Awesome. 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 And, uh, looking here on Facebook, which rem reminded me to briefly mention the, uh, the event that Greg, that you're running with Rockstar Connect, cause, uh, Kelly over, uh, at Rockstar oh, Connect yes. just friended me on Facebook. Uh, so Greg, you're running, uh, you're running an event and we actually need to get you, um, uh, get your videographer, uh, your, your new soon to be hired videographer out to that event. So quickly tell people what that's all about, and then we'll tell people about the uh, the course and all of our good stuff. Yeah, guys, it's just going to be a free networking event. I'm going to drop this link in here, uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. We're going to get the Prickly Pear in Blackhawk uh, on the 13th of July. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have appetizers. Uh, if you want to get a couple of frothy adult beverages, feel free and do so. Uh, but, yeah, it's just going to be a good time where you guys all get, get together. You guys can grow your business and just really kind of expand your own personal business and you know, Dustin, if you guys are interested, I will share with this uh, rock, the company called Rockstar Connect is the ones that are powering it for me. Dude, seriously, it's $300 a month. They all, they do everything for you. They'd work with your wife on the back end to get everything set up, right? And then all yeah. you do is just show up. They will get you free food, free event, you know, location. And then they, they push everybody there and they grow it every single month. I mean, they send you... A, they sent me a whole little goodie package here of everything in there. I mean, complete with you know, like lanyards, you know, saying that I'm the host, that I can rock this thing so nobody, you know, in case they forget what I look like, they're like, oh, well, that's the guy with the host, the, you know, the Sasquatch in the corner. <laughs> um, but but it, it's really cool, guys. Yeah, real, Rockstar Connect, really cool group, very professional, very excited. But I'll hook you, I'll, I'll give you some of the stuff at the end, my friend. Cool. Yeah, that'd be great. All right, guys. So for us, uh, we've got the new, the latest class is uh, July 10th is our next starting date. Get now business. Greg, anything you want to say about that? I know I uh, I mentioned it earlier, but uh, what do you have to say about it? Don't be a bitch. 
Sign up for the class. <laughs> okay. I need a big like big change. I need to be black all of a sudden. Okay. Mr. T. You know, yeah, Mr. Yeah, yeah. That's very, very A team of you. Yes, I am. Um, but no, guys, <laughs> really good. Go, go if you want to learn how to do business without having to do cold calls or door knocks or anything like that. And you, if you have a really small budget, a lot of the agents I talk with, I talk with a really cool dude, Steve, out of Jersey today. Loves the show. Um, got a low budget. He and I talked about, you know, what he could put into action. And this class is going to go really deep on it. And Matt and I are going to actually, we're going to retool it before we relaunch it again. We're going to add a lot more value. Not that there wasn't a value before, but we're going to bring some more additional value in that we found and learned about. So if you guys are looking to grow your business, man, in, in the third and fourth quarter, please join it. It's 297 one time fee, guys, and you get access mm -hmm. to all the recordings. So even if you can't go well, well with us live, mm -hmm. still join it because you're going to get the recordings and then you can reach out to Matt at all hours of the day and pick his brain. <laughs> <laughs> wow that's so man i didn't know that that's not on the landing page i forgot about that oh that's funny all right the guys. bonus i'm throwing in for everybody yeah exactly thanks greg appreciate it um now on to uh to a connect with us make sure to follow do not friend us on facebook mm -hmm. greg cannot take any more friend requests i typically do not accept any unless i personally know you so follow <laughs> us on facebook that way you get the latest uh, notifications uh of when we're going live and just all the good stuff that we're doing uh make sure to follow the show on itunes uh stitcher depending on your device for the audio version and YouTube for the video version, make sure to hit the subscribe. Uh, make sure to share it, guys. If you uh, if you enjoyed this episode and got a lot of value and inspiration out of Dustin's story, let us know. Uh, we're having more folks uh, kind of in this, kind of the 30 under 30, 40 under 40, kind of that. Me and Greg's age range, we're having more of those folks on the show. Uh, some of them are new to the business. Some of them, you know, uh, like Greg, are uh, close to being OGs uh, in the business. So... Uh, <laughs> 18 and a half years in, Greg. Um, so it's, it's going to be a variety of people, but we're making a special effort to bring you stories of people that uh, that have really come up and, and are hitting the ground running and building really great real estate businesses quickly um, because we know a lot of the people that are watching the show are wondering exactly how to do that and how to hit the ground running. We want to bring you more stories like that. So if you guys enjoy it, let us know. Give us some feedback. Make sure to subscribe and share the show. And uh, Greg, take us home. Matt, you're going to have to do it because I got kicked out of it, so you're going to be able to close it down. But as soon as Matt does it, Fantastic. peace out, ninjas. All right.